Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and like the description says in today's video, we're working on a pair of Doc Martens doing one heck of an interesting project. So come join us and check it out. So again, thank you for joining us. And uh, today we're working on these Doc Martens. It's the 7B100 model. It's uh, their iconic steel toe work boot. I don't know, this one uh, isn't a steel toe. I could not find this one because the model number on it is 7B10NS, so probably stands for no steel toe or something. Um, this model is made in China, unfortunately, but uh, the gentleman had requested something crazy he wanted these resold with JR leather soles so we're gonna do it now one of his soles is uh, as you can tell flopping off this was not our doing uh, Doc Martens in general they're kind of known for doing what's called a heat seal um, or heat attach basically they have or hot knife that's what it was hot knife sole uh, so basically they're the rubber that they use is a particular compound that uh, doesn't glue you can't really glue it it just it doesn't cooperate so they run the sole through a hot knife it's a knife that's heated up significantly and they put the sole together with the shoe and then they run it through and it kind of molds everything and just seals it up nicely uh, so it's it's a different process so anybody that has a pair of Doc Martens if you're ever wanting them resold uh, typically they don't really get resold at least not easily um, in today's method we're gonna have to remove the welt here replace it with a leather welt and then we're able to finally work off of that so we're gonna go ahead and get started we'll see how uh, the removal of these end up going they, Doc Martens is one of those that just their cobblers don't like working on them okay we just don't so and just cut off all this here now you're probably saying well Doc Martens are known for their cushioning and you know their comfort features and all that kind of stuff I understand they have a particular design once I get this sole off I'll be able to show you a little better they have a very particular design of boot that's basically how they were designed to have the sole be as cushioned as possible for oops, comfort features. Dropping my knife. They've got all these different paddings and cushions in there and everything, but uh, durability wise, recraftability, not even closely designed for that. They are they are designed technically to be worn out and tossed, and then you buy a new pair. And that's that's just how they're made so as you can tell the sole has some transparency to it it's a particular type of rubber that has some transparency to it it's got all these pockets in here and that's why they make it transparent so when you look underneath you can see all that pattern of that right there that hollowing out it ends up uh, basically having little air pockets so that helps a lot with cushioning when you incorporate it with other cushions like these little pads here it definitely ends up being a nice cushion feel but from an orthopedic standpoint no from an orthopedic standpoint harder materials are technically more beneficial in the long run of things while you're wearing it this will probably feel a little bit more comfortable just because it's all soft and cushiony and blah 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 and just yeah but I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove this felt piece carefully let the glue in now oh now that I got it out um, typically we will replace this I haven't decided until I start really working on these things I can't quite make a decision whether I'm gonna keep the felt piece or go with a cork I'm probably gonna go the route of doing cork on it um, just because this felt is meh. the cushion 
is meh also so you know that they're uh, again they are not designed for being recrafted so when this guy came in and he's like yeah I'd like these resold and I'm like well you know we can definitely resold them with some rubber and you know it ends up being a bit of a process and stuff so I started out by showing him the soles at least what kind of options he has and talked to him a little bit on pricing um, and uh, he's like well what about leather and so my only natural response is okay quite literally that okay and as soon as my sister Janelle heard that and Marcus heard that everyone was just like ooh let's see what this guy's got they were all just anxious and waiting for this guy to walk out the door because I was sitting there talking to him for a little while about it and uh, yeah he uh, <laughs> he wanted something interesting so we'd gone ahead and went with something interesting I'm gonna find ah there it is there we go stitch cutter just one of these guys just because it's gonna make it easier now typically we're we're gonna be getting in here and cutting the stitch this way right here all the way on the inside but because these are stitched on the outside with that iconic yellow thread um, we gotta cut the stitches on the outside thankfully this rubber is so easy to cut through on that welt and the welt is rubber also um, that's that's what I mean by that it just doesn't stick it's the same type as what the soles are so Probably shouldn't be doing it that way because I'm wearing out Janelle's stitch ripper. I think that's what it's called. I always forget. Man, these things are a pain in the butt. Okay. Yes, yes, we'll restitch these with yellow thread, obviously. I've already got it planned out. This is one of those projects that. Uh, now there's some projects for us that we have that we just kind of jump into it and we we do it as as we go that's very common amongst cobblers actually because every pair is different but there are those projects like this one where we kind of have to plan it out ahead like you know what welt am i going to use what sole am i going to use you know and and so on so this was definitely one that i kind of thought over mauled over except for the only thing is that the welt that i had designated for this one of our guys ended up grabbing it and using it on another pair of boots so i'm out of welts so tomorrow morning i am going out to our local supplier who stocks the welts and uh grabbing a couple yards of that stuff i'm getting a lot more boots and shoes in where people are wanting the welt replaced and you don't always need to have your welt replaced but in this case, I was not about to, you know, not replace the weld, basically. So, definitely had to do it with these. Oof. show you here in just a second because these are a rubber welt they usually don't have a split in it now with uh, your typical welts you'll actually have a little bit of a split kind of like a connecting point I have a pair of boots I'll show you in just a second because they're leather they just kind of sit flat like that so I've got a pair of Red Wings this is also one I'm doing a video on so right here there is a little bit of a split right there and that's where the leather meets the, the welt is stitched on all the way around and then it comes back to this end and then it meets right there and that's typical now because this is rubber there is no ends now obviously this one's all damaged up and everything and kind of twisted on me so it's kind of fused together in other words so there's no uh no actual end to it because of the fusion of uh of the hot knives that they use when they cut it they probably use a hot knife and it kind of sticks together immediately as well but there's the welt for it 
I might save that soul. I kind of feel like saving it just uh, for future or something. But uh, maybe I'll do it off of this boot here. I'll take off, I'll probably take off this one since this one was already coming apart. I was able to cut it. This one, I'll probably just undo the stitches and pull off the whole sole with that uh, weld piece that they have on there. And uh, yeah, so, ah, there we go. There's a connecting point right there. You can see it right there, there's that little split. So that's a connecting point and looks like it fused here at the bottom, but at the top, didn't quite catch as well. Yeah, so it didn't quite catch as well. That right there, that's damaged, so, yeah. That's, uh, that's why they're in here for resoling. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pull out all the stitching and everything. Like I said, I still have to pick up the uh, leather storm welt, uh, is what it's called. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'll see you back in just a And before I let you go, actually, um, talk about the inside real quick. I know I talk way too much and stuff. Let me just readjust this for you. Uh, just a little bit, I think. All right. So... Obviously, we got the weld that's stitched through the upper here. You can see all that yellow thread sticking out. It's kind of nice that it, you know, stands out so much, so it's easier to show. But like a traditional Goodyear welted style shoe, for example, or boot, these ones here, they've got the leather upper. Obviously, that's the outside. They've got the uh, liner coming through here and everything. Uh, yep, looks like it's got that felt li uh, liner in there, so you could kind of see that line across here. On the back of the heel you see an extra row and uh, usually on the toe yep you can see just a little bit that's usually the toe cap counter on the inside here in between the liner and um, outer leather same thing on the heel that kind of helps keep that uh, shape of the toe and the heel and everything and then um, and then you've got this other piece here which is called the gimming the gimming is what the uh, welt is well every well kind of holds everything together because the gimming is glued to this insole right here and uh, once it's glued on there you can see it sticking out a little bit uh, the stitching goes right through all of those layers and everything so what i'm gonna have to do to remove it uh, i need some pliers there they are so in order to remove it i either have to go like this well it keeps ripping on me so that's not gonna quite work i'm gonna end up having to take a little extra time and use a pick like this just a little sharp tool and go in on the inside and pull it like that there it goes so it takes a little more time but it looks like at the toe it's actually not not too bad but sometimes it gets a little frustrating now i'm gonna have to do a little bit of repair looks like the glue that they used see right here that black glue that goop looking stuff i'm gonna have to try to carefully remove as much as i can because that one i can't get to the stitches and two, it actually caused the, the gimming to fold up in this spot a little bit. So, got to fix that up beforehand. And I thought I'd show that real quick as far as construction wise. Now underneath you can definitely see that this piece right here, that insole, the, the kind of the bed of everything. Let's take out the insole here. And you can see it on the inside here too. It's just that fiberboard stuff. It's basically pressed paper. It's like taking cardboard uh, from a box and pressing it, you know, quite a bit and then becomes very dense. Um, definitely not a quality thing. I mean, it's it, it keeps the cost down, in other words. That's why these things are going for, what is it, 140 bucks, and that's the steel toe version. Um, so again typically resoling these things cost wise are just not worth it so you know unless you do something crazy if you want something crazy like this gentleman wants these are kind of sentimental from him from what i understood he's had these for many many years um and then if they're the ones that are still made in europe also those might be worth it but the made in china models typically aren't worth doing Great, this thing's actually pulling out for fairly well. I jinx myself here. All right, it's like a little ladder. Look at that, that's cool. But anyways, I'll continue on and then uh, I'll be back here in just a few. All right, everyone, so back here again with uh, some welt and everything. This is, of course, a leather welt that we have. So kind of an upgrade for sure. 
and at this point I'm stitching it on. Now typically this is what's called storm welt and typically there's this channel right here and that's what we stitch through but because uh, these have the yellow stitching uh, we have to stitch it on the outside and so it makes it a little more difficult that's why I got tape on my fingers that's in order to try to help protect my fingers as much as possible not doing a great job I already had a few cuts from previous waltz that I was replacing and now I got a new one of my little pinky here unfortunately but that's kind of what it looks like right there on the outside obviously once the sole is on there it's going to be a little more evened out right now since uh since it's all dry finally it kind of got a little wonky until it gets heated up and then repositioned with that sole on there but this one however right here that i'm stitching on right now is still a little damp and i'm probably going to spray it a few times throughout the stitching process and you know it's it's a slow process because I'm trying to find the original hole right here. Let me try to show you the original hole from the previous stitching right there. You can see all of them going across there. And then I have to go through the welt on that same area, get it through the hole, and then run the stitch through. I'm just using a all kind of like that right there. Or a hook needle or jerk needle is what it's called. Sorry. Alls are usually uh not quite a needle actually or not this version this is a jerk needle and you really have to be careful because since this is kind of a spot that's very thick since this is a spot that's very thick on the welt definitely have to kind of force it through so there it goes grab one end tighten it Double, in, double check that previous stitch, make sure that didn't shift on me. And then really give it a nice tug. So that's what it's like right there. So I'll do kind of a quick fast forward of the rest of this boot, or at least a portion of it, and uh, let you see what it looks like in fast, fast speed. Ooh, these things are very tough to stitch actually and it's not because of the boot itself it's the way I have to stitch through the welt so again tape that's why I have to have it I even have to take off my hat starting to get a little warm but uh, now at this point I'm on my last few stitches now I have I cut the welt usually just a little extra just to make sure that in case anything happens just because the wool welt may want to stretch on me or shorten up or something you know I don't want to end up uh, having to redo it all because I didn't cut the or I cut the welt too short I'd rather have it a little bit longer so I'm gonna grab my knife here and just mark it where I want it so I'm just using that to mark and I've got one of these knives I think I believe they're Japanese um, very popular by the boot and shoe makers out there in uh, in Asia. They they love using these things. Get a scrap piece of leather. And that's why we have so many scrap pieces all around. Voila. Nice clean cut. There we go. Toss that little piece 
some cobblers say why are you throwing out a little piece like that it was about that big there um because they're known for being able to piece things in well i don't like piecing in pieces of leather or i mean of welt which is actually a very common practice amongst a number of cobblers i'm not a big fan of it but I'm not gonna dog anyone that does do that. It's a it's a talent all in itself. Being able to piece a small chunk of uh, welt into a boot and make it seamless. I've done it before too. I'm just not a big fan of doing so. Um, just doesn't feel proper to me. So that's why I'm not gonna really save that chunk. If I got those chunks lying around, I'm gonna I might end up getting tempted to do it, and that's kind of like a shortcut way. But sometimes it's needed to be done that way just because person doesn't really want to spend that kind of money on it or something so it's understandable oh, come on this very last one is a little on the difficult side there it goes okay and then I'm gonna Tighten it all up. Ah, my tape wore out and that hurt. And then, ah, it's a matter of getting these all to pull together. There it goes. Now this last stitch is a little bit uh, frustrating just well, not frustrating, it's different, I mean. What you do is, and this is for any cobblers that may be a little more aware of it. Hang on. So, I'm gonna stick it through. You can see that large gap, but everything's gonna get pulled together. This is where we started, so I'm sticking the needle through that same exact hole as where I started the very first stitch. And have it go through there. Typically, that's uh, the connecting points anyways. And I'm gonna leave this a little bit longer because I need to pull it through. If I can, it keeps sliding off the hook on me. There we go. And I'm not pulling this uh, loop that I just pulled through all the way. I'm leaving a good section and portion right there because I'm gonna stick this in. Leave a good portion there. And use that strand to pull it back inside the boot. There we go. I could just trim off some of that. That was a horrible cut, by the way. And once the two ends are inside the boot, I can tighten it all up. Now with the welt on that connecting point, I'm gonna have to kind of align it a little bit and put a little dab of sealant on there. Oh, keeps wanting to come untied on me. I don't like it when it does that. All right, I'm gonna have to use a little bit of sealant just a bit ahead on the stitches there. Nice and tight. There we go. And now I'll do the second loop real quick. There we go. Ah, that's my other knife. This one's better for cutting like that. Voila. So we got everything stitched up again. I'm gonna have to get this all to line up and put a little bit of a sealant there on the connecting points and stuff and kind of piece it over because it keeps bumping into each other and kind of folding funny and uh, that's a little bit of a frustrating end to mess with and then afterwards I'm gonna go ahead and line it with some cork I've got a sheet of cork here like this and then once I have that cork settled in then I can continue on but uh, we definitely want to fill this in because this void here it's just empty and when you're standing on it if there's nothing here you're gonna feel these little rims here not always but majority of the time right in these areas you'll feel on the ball of the foot sometimes in the heel area 
So you have to put something in there as a filler and also as a cushioner. Cork is preferred because it's a little bit higher quality. It might be a little bit on the harder side compared to some of those foam materials, not the felt that they used, but other foam materials. But once it's broken in, it really feels more like a custom made orthotic almost for you. Uh, great for insulation, shock absorption, and wicking away moisture. So I'm going to let these sit for a little while because I need to let that water evaporate out of there and then I'll be able to continue on with them. Today's the end of the day, so I'll continue on tomorrow on them. So I'll see you in a few. All right, everyone. So I actually had to go back in and take out the cork um, just because I had a bit of a issue with the welt. In other words, the way it was, the way it wasn't sitting right. And I ended up deciding I better do it a little bit more thoroughly. So this one's already finished here. So the problem was that this stitch on the outside here alone wasn't enough to really withstand, you know, getting pulled down, especially with like a leather sole on there and everything. So I had to go through and restitch it all around the edges here. So basically this is double stitched welt. The welt itself is double stitched, not, not the sole. So I had to make sure to thoroughly go through it all and have it secured very, very well because you know, you can't, you can't do a shoddy job and then get it done quickly. You know, I kind of wish I could have predicted this a little bit sooner, but unfortunately, you know, always, you don't always have that possibility of being able to do that. So, i to correct my mistake and uh, get it secured a little more thoroughly. It is part of our industry in general. Uh, a cobbler industry i mean some of you who might be familiar enough with shoes you see the types of builds out there the different types of styles you've seen some of my videos possibly too there are so many different variants of shoes and boots and the way that they're built and designed and everything and it's and you know from the outside they might look one way but from the inside it's a whole different way so quite literally in our industry it's a learning experience constantly. Always learn something new, figure out something new, you know, tweak a new method or an old method. So that's just kind of part of it, in other words. So this was definitely a learning one that the outside yellow welt that uh, we put on, or the stitching, I mean, it has very limited functionality, in other words. So. I gotta be sure to get it right the first time now. But I know for the future, that way I might be able to save a little bit of time. I'd still, I'd still end up doing the uh, the yellow stitch, regardless, and then doing this stitch here. And this is typically how good your welt is actually stitched in from the inside, so you don't actually see any of the stitching, but. Doc Martens in particular and a few other brands out there, they stitch them on the outside and that outside stitch just really seems, you know, I don't want to say decorative. It's not quite decorative. It does have functionality when it's done by a machine, but when you're doing it by hand, the way things are lined up and you're converting to a different type of welt, it's, it's a whole different ball game. So I'm going to do my final knot in here. Nice and tight. And yes, I had to use the tape again. My fingers were busted up badly. Not only after this pair, but I had another pair that was just horrible to do. So, gotta be sure to start using that tape a little more. I still have yet to make some proper finger, um, finger covers and stuff. Some cobblers actually have some that they've made years ago and I never got around to making them, so definitely going to have to be on my to-do list, hopefully sometime soon, because I'm getting a lot more um, shoes that need welt replaced. I've got like four pairs lined up up there that are needing it done. So let me go ahead and get this one taken care of. I'm going to refill it with cork and everything and continue on, so we'll see you back in a little bit. All right, everyone, so we've got cork filled in and everything. Everything's all ready to go, glued up. Got a piece of a JR sole, I had to take it out of the sheet actually, um, because the pre-cut soles just 
didn't fit it just quite so um, at least right here where the welt area is until we trim everything out and stuff I'd rather have a little excess amounts of it so go ahead and lay all that out and then I gotta let it cure overnight I was debating over and over about the stitching aspect of it let me hammer it real quick whether I should uh, stitch the welt because if I do stitch not the welt, I mean, I'm sorry, the sole to the welt. If I do, there's going to be a black stitch across this area here. And um, it would just be this first layer because I still have to put multiple other layers, build up that heel base and so on. But uh, yeah, this is uh, basically where we're at right now. So I'm going to need to put this on the press. I'll let you check it out and see what it looks like. Or um, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze there right now, but I'll see what I can do. Let's move over to the press. So this is our five and one. It's uh, it's got a cutting tool down here, a splitting tool. This is the welt press here. So I'm just gonna go under and press it all out. Okay. I think the camera's gonna kind of get in the way here for me. So let me try to go over the camera. But. Typically, this is how it's done right here. Oh, there it goes again with the camera. All right, but you get the idea. So it presses down. Let me show you real quick. So it presses it down right there. As you can see, the welt being pressed down all around makes sure that it's got a nice tight bond to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the rest of the shoes since or boot since it's getting in the way of the camera and they're both kind of in the way but i thought i'd show you real quick so let's see maybe i might be able to real quick if you got a second readjust it all make sure the laces are all out of the way man these guys are just getting in the way of each other bad between the boot and everything there we go so just like that you can probably see it there there we go so it's got a nice tight press and now i'll let it sit for just a little bit cool off and then i'm gonna trim around the edges and get all that extra off this came out of a sheet that was kind of funky sized anyway so obviously there's gonna be a lot left over but for the time being i gotta let these cool and we'll be back in just a Alright everyone, so obviously as you saw I ended up sanding out the edges. Now I didn't go ahead and do it on the trimmer just because we're going to be building it up higher. we got to build up the wedge and everything into the sole and that's definitely going to have to be sanded. So I'd like to actually keep it all about the same. But I did something crazy I guess you can call it. The number of cobblers are probably going to be kind of going what is wrong with you and getting kind of mad or frustrated because I know there's a number of cobblers that can't stand this um, but I did it on this pair anyways mainly because it's going to be you know one of those types of boots that we're not going to have to redo in such a manner again at least not in the near future anytime soon probably decades down the road or something but uh, at that point we're gonna have to basically reconstruct these completely so what I had done is obviously you can tell that I stitched it but you can see that these the stitch here is not sitting inside of a channel like you would expect what i ended up doing is i flipped this boot upside down and there's a blade right under here and it cut the channel on the welt itself so the stitch is sitting inside the welt which is one of those things that you see nowadays on a number of uh, shoe and boot makers out there. It is more of an aesthetics thing. There's nothing functional about it necessarily because the welt doesn't get anywhere. But I thought I would do this to hide that stitch a little bit better. That's main goal of it. Obviously, I'm going to have to go through with a bit of an acrylic paint and touch it up because during the stitching, it did take off some of the paint in some of these other areas just a little bit. So I'm going to have to touch it up with an acrylic paint because that's what's usually done. So that 
black stitch is not going to be so visible at the top here anymore which is kind of one of the whole points of it i mean typically we stitch it like this upside down where i ended up having to flip the boot the opposite direction in order for the blade to be able to open up that channel and have it sitting inside there now for some of you may be thinking doesn't that weaken up the welt technically it does but you have to keep in mind that this boot is going to be fairly stiff in other words because of the leather and everything this gentleman did request leather so it's not going to be wearing out in such a manner all the shoes and boots that i've seen come through here whether they're low quality and even high quality i've had some pairs of higher quality like edward greens and uh, i believe one of them was a john lobb even uh, where they did the same exact method where it was a little bit more you know sitting inside the channel like that and so we did it on a pair of doc martens why not we're doing crazy stuff with the doc martin might as well go all out and try something else that's my opinion but a few of our guys here when they come in tomorrow because they already left for the day are going to be going what they're going to be sitting there scratching their head and wondering if uh, my brain is fried or something and some of the cobblers that are familiar with it watching probably thinking the same thing um, could be. I need a vacation. And uh, they're not cheap these days. Well, actually, technically they're cheap. I just, I can't go on one quite yet with the newborn baby and everything. Mm -mm. It ain't going to happen for a little while. But anyways, let me show you what it looks like. I've got everything sprayed down on the sole, and this thing is drying fast. Man, let me spray it down again. These JR soles do not like water, which is a good thing technically for everyone wearing a pair of shoes or boots that have JR soles. So we're gonna start on the inside here, and yes, I do have to kind of move this around and everything to make sure it all lines up, and it's very hard to tell where everything is sitting for you guys, but I can just barely see. And thankfully the leather on these is very flexible. Everything's flexible on these boots. So this can handle doing the reverse channel stitch where it's channeled on the welt itself. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. Now, as you can tell, I have to go much slower on this. This is uh, new territory in the cobbler industry, basically. Um, so, <laughs> kind of interesting doing this. And there's a number of cobblers probably scratching their head like, oh, um, I don't know if I should be watching this and stuff, or why am I watching this idiot doing a reverse channel stitch? Because, there you go, sitting on the inside there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you shouldn't be able to see it as much. It's sitting inside the channel, and basically what I'm going to do is go through our welt press and press everything out all around, and it's going to close it up even more. 
and then afterwards obviously I gotta touch it up with some acrylic paint around everywhere I mean these things are gonna be shined up anyways afterwards and during that period we'll be able to touch all that up I just got to be careful a little bit more to not hit that yellow stitching because that's really um, really something that you don't want to screw up too much but anyways this shoe is a number of what is wrong with you you are a stupid cobbler do you i don't know why i watch you anymore and stuff but there you go channeled welt stitch on a goodyear welted hand goodyear welted that's double welted doc martin <laughs> that's a um, that's a mouthful i'm gonna have to think up of a title for this video at the end of everything so it's gonna be one heck of a title but you probably already see it for now during the time of recording i have no clue what i'm gonna write all i know is it's gonna say jr leather and doc martens at this moment and now apparently it's gonna have other things written in there hopefully there's enough room for all of it anyways i'm gonna go ahead and press everything down while it's still wet and then i'm gonna let it cure and you know dry overnight because it's just a little damp but i want this welt to dry mainly um, before we do much else and then we're going to start uh, building up that heel base but for now i'm going to go ahead and uh, cut out some uh, sheets of leather that will fit everything underneath here these stitches again they don't need to be channeled because you know they're going to be covered with more leather now obviously if i do double stack jr and then on the back of the heel it's going to be a huge wedge like that i'm not going to be able to you know stitch all of that that's just too much especially jr leather how dense and hard it is i'm going to break this machine i am not breaking one of the best machines out there to do this the other thing is if they end up needing to get resold down the road there's no way anyone's going to be able to resold them you know cost effectively i mean i feel like i got underpaid for this job already as is anyways but let me go ahead and get all that taken care of and we'll see you back in a little bit all right everyone so apparently it didn't record it but i did end up uh and, oops drilling out a portion of this right here and uh you know just to kind of lighten up the weight of it basically i can drill it out some more with smaller holes around here but at that point it may end up starting to weaken everything up and uh now i'm gonna go ahead and start getting ready to stick the heels on i'm doing the jr vibram combo heel like that there obviously it's because that rubber is going to be the first point of impact when he's walking and we want a little bit of grip on there as far as the sole area he did request leather so we're going to keep it like that if he ever decides he wants to add a protective sole or anything like that that's easily done and i mean we could just take off that first layer of sole there that we have over top of or i mean the second layer of sole that's over top of the first layer that can all be taken off and then replaced as well with uh with something new so i'm gonna go ahead and stick the heels together let them cure for a little bit and then go ahead and start sanding things out i gotta make sure to sand out the heel at an angle because that's what the original ones were like right there they were sanded at an angle so let me go ahead and get that taken care of glued together and i'll see you back in just
All right, everyone. So we've sanded everything up roughly, but before I do my palm sanding to even things out, I'm gonna grab this little tool here and it's kind of a edger, helps cut the edge a little bit like that right there to make it not so sharp in other words. And it kind of curls up after sanding and everything. So I'm just gonna go through like that. So now it's a little more smoothened up there on the edges. So this one, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move over to my palm sander. Sand this up some more. I'm not gonna waste your time too much on that. It's just to kind of even it out, make it a little more smoothened out. But uh, when it's time to do the edging, I'm gonna do it at the same time as the bottom stand. That's why I'm sanding everything out. And, uh, and I'll let you check that out. I have an idea for a bottom finish on there. Well, the bottom finish, I think I'm gonna, mm, that's kind of a tough one. I don't know if I should do it in black to match the rest of the boot or if I should do something else. I had a couple of ideas in mind and I just can't make up my mind. So let me get around to that and I'll I'll be back in just a few. Let me just uh, get the palm sanding it taken care of at least. <laughs> So on the last machine, we ended up doing the edging on there with the varnish wheel, which is like this one here. It's got basically stacks of le uh, leather and uh, we melt this hard wax into it using friction. Uh, this one here is dark brown, so I couldn't use that one. I had to go to the other machine. Usually when I'm not recording, I'm able to switch back and forth because these machines are kind of like parallel to each other basically. So I just turn and I'm at the other machine already. So. Now we're over at our other machine. I didn't varnish the bottom because that's just gonna be way too much wax on the bottom, basically. Um, it's gonna make it very, very slick. I mean, it's, it's leather, so it's not supposed to grip anyways, and it's gonna have a little bit of a slickness to it regardless. But, um, I mean, you know, if I put on the varnish wax like that, it's, it's gonna stay slippery for a very long time. But uh, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to our nylon brush right here, apply some of that Yankee wax on here so I can get a good uh, coverage on the bottom and then buff it out on this horsehair brush right here. So let's go ahead and get started.
All right, everyone. So first things first, um, the mate to this boot I already worked on. Um, it's close to being done, but I had to kind of work on the vision, in other words, first. So now to match this one, and you'll be able to see it. I won't, you know, spoil the surprise basically of what it looks like, in other words, but it, the other one's taped up at the moment. So I'll show you once I'm done with these steps. So because the the edges are so black and everything, and this gentleman did request leather, I thought I'd make the leather pop a little extra from the side. So I've got my channel uh, tool here, and basically it's preset. And I'm gonna go through and do that. Yes, it looks terrifying, doesn't it? But it's leaving this nice line right there. It's gonna show the leather. Now afterwards, I'm gonna seal it up with some silicone um, towards the end. But for the time being, I thought it'd be great to be able to show that there's leather. And since Doc Martens have the, have the lines here around the edges anyways on their soles, you know, I can't exactly imitate that because that's actually a special uh, bladed machine that they have, a special tool. So I can't quite imitate that. And um, going through and doing channel after channel is going to be extremely hard. And if this gentleman ever has them shined, the shoe shine guy that works on them is going to basically, you know, ruin this little design here, in other words at least you know at some point then in the near future if he decides you know he wants to have them shined and re-edged and everything there's one streak and so doing that won't be an issue in other words when you got a layer of wax already on here that's varnished in and the sides of these JR soles are kind of hard to do as well go now it shows off a little bit of that leather there from the side I like it what do you guys think yeah. definitely definitely gives it a little bit of a different character now on the other one I did also go through the bottom and did the same thing at a different depth I believe I'm gonna have to double check that and let me readjust this guide real quick okay so I had it very very close but same exact story just on the bottom though and uh, I wanted to really feature that there is leather under here and it's not just black rubber of some sort of composite so let's see if I can try to do this a little bit closer with you guys A little hard right there because it's it goes down this little slope here and then it turns into rubber and then back into leather so that right there is a very tough tough spot oh man i think the rubber got this thing clogged up just a little bit oh, of course and i don't have a thin needle right next to me i'm grab a needle get that hole emptied out so that's how this channeling tool goes i'll just show you real quick so right there there's a hole i'll show you right there and the hole is uh sharpened on one side basically so it's able to cut through and create this channel
Dang it, it kind of jumped on me and skipped, so I got that ugly little notch here. So I gotta go fix that up real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so I got it fixed up right there. So looking a little bit better now. Now, of course, I'm gonna do a silicone seal on this one as well, but now I gotta flip this guide around real quick because right here at this heel, again, that little slope there and then the um, uh, the material difference there between the rubber and the leather, it's kind of a tough spot to take care of. So I have to readjust to compensate for that. There we go. So again, it's not perfect right here. There's a little bit of unevenness just because it's a huge transition basically for this knife to be able to handle from going from leather to rubber. Um, let's see, to what's underneath there? Looks like three layers almost to me, but oh okay so it's a it's two different rubbers basically the vibram rubber there and then it's a composite type of rubber as well and then back into the leather and it's all at a slope transition so it's a very very tough spot but kind of gives you an idea there now the other one now i can reveal the beauty of it is taped off because yeah Time to do a little bit of spray art. I'm trying to see. Doc Martens. This is the, what I'm doing on this one here. Now the other one, because after all this was JR Leather, you guys saw it, uh, the sheet of leather and everything. I want to make sure that I put on JR on here. But I'm going to do it like the traditional JR soles usually have, which was the bust pair right here, kind of like that. But it's going to be bigger letters just across there. So. I'm going to do it in the same spot. I was debating whether I should do gold like JR usually does it or if I should stick to yellow. I think I'll stick to yellow that way there's not too much color contrast between the two. I mean obviously you can tell there's color contrast between the letters but that's because the sheets that I had to cut them out of and everything they come in a few different colors. So let me go ahead and uh, do the JR real quick on this one and I'll be back here in just a few minutes. I don't want to waste your time of placing it and blah blah blah. It takes too long so I'll see you back in just a few minutes when it's time to actually start getting that All right, everyone. So basically what was left was just kind of like the, you know, semi-boring stuff, in other words, on um, these ones. So I'd gone ahead and gone through the soles on the bottom of these. Oh, here's the unveiling, by the way. Forgot to show that part, basically. I had to take off the tape and all that and uh, let it cure overnight and everything. Came in tonight, or this morning, I mean, and uh, Grab this phoebing silicone here. Um, now a number of you are saying, oh, silicone, that's bad for leather. Well, it's bad if you plan to treat the leather afterwards, where with JR leather, you don't need to. So I went ahead and uh, went around the edges everywhere here, make sure I get it inside where I ended up doing that notch here on the bottom all the way around, even over top of the lettering here. And then, um, and then I let that cure for a little while and then just a little light spray of a clear coat as well. And there you go. So got the soles there. JR for JR leather. Seems very basic on that one. And then Doc Martens right there. So hopefully this gentleman likes it there. Um, 
as far as the uppers, I did clean them up. I had to go through very carefully with a knife and scrape off a few spots. It looks like there was something that was spilt on there and got dried and crispy. I uh, cleaned them all up and went through with the Saphir uh, Seraphin Cream. It's got the almond oil in it to condition and restore some of that color and give it some waterproofing features because there's waxes in that cream as well. And then as far as the letters here on the bottom, I did have to end up just going ahead and using the Angelus because that spray dye just wasn't yellow enough it was like kind of like a beige yellow almost so yep gone through got that taken care of um you know, did some final touch-ups here and there and yeah these are all taken care of cleaned up the insoles uh, the laces a bit too um and yeah that's about it so hopefully everyone enjoyed it, enjoyed the uh, video on these it's it's kind of a different one obviously with doc martens you know being what they are in other words and we put on a leather welt on there so with the amount of stuff that went into these i'm gonna have to christen these these shoes will hmm I had a name for them and i just spaced out on it ah doc madness doc madness dr madden madness so instead of doc martens doc madness because these are madness, quite literally, what, the, what these have been converted to, in other words. So, let's break it down real quick. In other words, we have double stitched welt with JR leather soles that are reverse channel stitched, so that means they're stitched on the welt with the channeling, double JR sole, JR heel base, JR Vibram combo heels, and yeah that's uh quite a bit actually for these shoes oh and yeah and then cork uh cork inlays and everything on the inside and yeah these things uh these things have a number done to them so they're all ready to go again i hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching I'll show these off one last time there if you have any other questions Leave a comment down below and if you like the video give me a thumbs up and don't forget to sub subscribe if you haven't already oh, at the end of the day and i can't talk here today subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell icon to be notified when we have our next video out and uh, if you have any other questions and they're a little more detailed you can't fit in the comments just go to our website cobblersplus.com uh, by the time this video is up i think we should have our new website up and running where you can actually see and purchase uh, services and products as well so definitely check that out cobblersplus.com and you can get a hold of us that way again thank you for watching and we'll see you next time